Good morning. Good morning from the Hunter Valley. Um, live here from my studio. Hey, Fred. Good morning. Okay, I've got to do some um, quick setup for Facebook. So I'm going to do that before we start the webinar live. In the meantime, say hi. Tell us where you're joining us from. And, um, you know, if this is your first time in one of my webinars, if this is the first time you've joined me, say hi and let me know that too, because it's always nice to hear from new people. Okay. All right. So Facebook Live is happening now. Okie doke. We're live stream. Hey, Fred. Okay. So chat is live. Good morning from Hoi An. Um, what I wouldn't do from a Ben Me from Ben Me from Fred. I would absolutely love that right now. Um, participants, that's open. Okay. Hey, Christian. Hey, Kim, Christina, Marty, Mark. Just say hi in the chat. Let me know you're here. Hey, Christian. Vancouver. That's a beautiful part of the world that I have not been to as yet. It's on the list. It's just a question of timing. Okie doke. Okay, so we're live on Facebook as well. If you're um, on Facebook, say hi in the chat too. Okay, Christina is in Minnesota. Kim, good evening. Marty, hey. Okie dokie. I can see. I can see Samantha. Right. I need to just mute mute Facebook. I can hear myself talking twice. It's not, it's very confusing. Okay, that's better. It's not working. I still can hear myself. Okay. All right, it's working. Here we go. Right. Okay. So, today, it's not your art that sucks. Now, this is one of those things that drives us all very mad. We work really, really hard. Sometimes we can work 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week on marketing and we feel like nothing is working, nothing's selling, right? And it's frustrating. It drives us absolutely insane and I can completely empathize with you because I've been there myself, right? Now, there's a couple of lessons I learned along the way that made a massive difference to how that was achieved and how that worked. Casey, I'm just going to turn off your camera, mate, because it makes it really distracting for me when I see people's cameras. Okay, so when we're working really hard on our marketing, we feel like nothing is working. There's a couple of reasons, and I can guarantee you that 99.999999% of the time, it's not the art, your art that sucks, it's that your marketing sucks. And your marketing sucks not because you're doing it wrong necessarily, but because you're thinking of it as marketing, and this is the challenge. Okay, so let's take it back to the first question. How do we work out if our art sucks? That's really easy. Right. If you've sold your art to someone who is not related to you, someone who doesn't live in your house, someone who doesn't who know who you are, apart from having found you on Facebook or come and met you at a um, art fair or show or whatever. Right. And you've sold your art to more than one person that you do not know personally. It's not your art that sucks. Right. So I know oh, there's a lot of you guys out there that sell um sell your work you go to art fairs no problem selling your work you you put your um work in um art prizes or you know competitions and all of that you you score really well you win even you're doing really really well from that point of view but when it comes to selling stuff online it just doesn't happen okay so 
once you've worked out that it's not your art that sucks, and I can guarantee you it's, that's not the case for just about everybody here today, right? So then the question is, it's, it's, it's all about the marketing. Now, the first trick with marketing when you're trying to sell your art is to stop thinking about it as marketing, right? We have a blockage in our heads when we think about marketing our art because we think of it as marketing. Right. And when we start thinking about it as art, as marketing, A, we don't like it. Right. So in our heads, because we don't like it, we don't treat it the way we may if it wasn't, um, if it was something we enjoyed doing. But B, when we think about it the wrong way, we do it the wrong way. And it's not that we're doing the physical tasks the wrong way, is that we're communicating the wrong way. Okay, now when you're trying to sell, the way, the way I liken it, and I've been there, is the more desperate you are to sell work, the more desperate you become, and that's the way you portray yourself online. Now, what I mean by that is that we try every trick in the book. So we do the, you know, buy this, get a free set of steak knives. We try the discount. We tried discounting even having up even even more than last time because last time it didn't work. So instead of doing 20% off, we're going to do 30% off. 30% off didn't work, so let's do 40% off. Let's do 50% off. Bugger it. Let's just make it half price, right? It doesn't work because for two reasons. One, when you're selling, you're not communicating with your audience as a confident, excellent artist that you are. You're communicating like that night, late night shopping, shopping channel salesperson. So that's part of the problem. But two is you're not sharing your story, right? And sharing your story about your art is the thing that is missing from your marketing, right? So instead of telling people the technical details or something, um, you know, this is on this beautiful paper or this is that. Honestly, most buyers don't know the difference. They don't care. What they know is they like that picture on the wall. They want to buy it, right? So what you want to do is then make it as easy as possible because you've communicated with them. You've given them the story behind the work, right, and told them why you're passionate about this. This is one of my favorite birds. This is a red, red tailed black cockatoo, right? So I talk about the thing that I love about this, right? I share that. When they love that too, then they're, they're more interested in buying, right? I'm not telling them about the technical things. Like that's a canvas, it's stretched, it's got a frame, all of that. They don't care, right? That's just details. They need to feel the heart first, okay? So when you're selling art, it's not like you're selling an iPhone or you're selling um, a luxury product, a handbag or something like that. You, when you're selling those luxury products, yes, there is absolutely an attachment to the brand. But it's, it's, it's a bit more um, separated. But as an artist, we are the brand. Right. So when we're selling a bit of art, we're selling a little bit of us. So when we're selling, we need to stop selling and instead tell our stories. Right. So we tell the story about how we got to this place to see this beautiful scene, how we captured it. You know, if you're a photographer, you know, why it was that you went to this particular place. I love to share behind the scenes videos, you know, me standing back from the camera, seeing what I see when I'm looking at the scene, those sorts of things. As a painter, you show progress shots. You do all of those things, right? But you're sharing you as well as the art. And it's that key, to me, that's the key. Once you start telling stories, stop trying to sell, you start selling more. So don't try and sell your art. Start telling your stories about your art. When you do that, you click and you communicate with your audience so much better than when you're trying to be the sales dude, okay? And when you're trying to sell stuff, 
you don't communicate the way you need to and the way you should with your with your audience. All right. Now I know that that sounds too simple, and it, it might be frustratingly simple for some people. And I agree. I totally understand that because for me, there's nothing more frustrating than something really, really simple that, you know, is blindingly obvious, right? But I honestly believe it is that simple. Stop trying to sell and start being passionate about your communication, about your art and, and your audience, right? Once you start building those connections with your audience, then you, um, you start feeling differently. Now, let me, let me put it to you in a different way, right? So we all know that if we go and do an art fair or a market or something like that, in a good day, you might speak to 20 or 30 people, right? And if you've got five or 10 minutes to talk to a person, you can build a rapport, you've got eye contact, you've got facial expressions, you've got your hands, you've got your body language, you've got all of those things. And you can build a connection with a person in five or 10 minutes. And you may even sell a piece on the spot during that first five or 10 minutes, right? Now, that's how we sell when we're face to face. It's so much easier. The problem with that is it's not scalable, right? We can't go to every city in America and do an art fair every weekend. We can't put the emotional energy into doing that every single weekend of the year, right? It's hard work. Physically and mentally, it's hard. It's expensive. All of those things come with it, right? But that's how we would sell so much more work. But it's not scalable. It's not doable. You know, you might do three or four shows in a year, and that's enough for you as an emotional, physical toll to do. The beauty of online is you can scale. The downside of online is the time factor, okay? It takes so much more time to build relationships online, right? One of the reasons for that is that I, I'm, I'm guessing 99% of the people that I'm talking to right now don't like doing what I'm doing right now, standing in front of the camera and communicating with your audience, right? I don't like doing it when I'm just recording a video. But when I'm doing this and I'm having a conversation with a group of artists, then it's really easy for me to do this. And that's where I find this is the best way to communicate, communicate with the artists that I work with is standing in front of the camera and having a conversation. Okay. Now, if you can, if you feel comfortable doing that, then that's going to help you, um, connect with your audience better and grow your art business because the more you can stand in front of the camera, the more you can do the communication with eye contact and the facial expressions and people can see your passion. But I know that most artists would much prefer to be standing behind the camera, right? S sitting at the easel doing work. Um, so you've got to find a way to communicate your passion. And, you know, there are plenty of different ways to do videos today. You do not need any special tools. The phone that's in your pocket is way better than, you know, the cameras that they were using to film movies only a few years ago, okay? So you don't need to buy any special tools, you know. Maybe you buy a, a tripod to high, hold your phone. Um, I do, when I do my videos, I do TikTok videos. I just recorded eight before we did this. I've got this little magnetic stand for my for my phone, right? And that sits on my desk, all right? That's really easy and allows me, I've got a um, stand-up desk so it's a height adjustable. I can stand my desk up at exactly the right height and get the shot, get the video doing it that way. Turn the camera sideways if I was doing something not for uh, reels or whatever. But, you know, that's really easy to do. You've got to find the thing that works for you, authentically you communicating with your audience. And this is the key, right? I can't be any other artist. You can't be any other artist. You can only be yourself. So you need to find the best communication method for you, right? Be authentic to yourself and um, just communicate with your audience in the way that you are. Now, the, the key with this, and this is the, this is the other thing that 
I think as artists we're really bad at. And I'm going to use some language, so please excuse me. But to get people passionate about you, right, you have to have it both ways. You can't make everybody happy, right? If you're making everybody happy, what you're doing is making nobody happy because you're trying to find the middle ground where you're not upsetting anybody, right? So to make people find your people, find your tribe and find the people who are really passionate about you and your art, you have to do the opposite as well. You need to upset people by speaking your truth, right? So sometimes you're going to piss people off, right? But pissing people off to me is a great thing because what that means is I'm polarizing people and I want to polarize people. I want to find the people who really love me and I'm completely at peace with finding the people who hate me, right? Because the people who love me are the ones I want. Right? I don't want people going, oh, maybe this is okay. I want people going, oh, my God, this is awesome. This is my language. This is what I want to do, right? So that needs to come through in your communication. Now, Samantha's asked a great question. Um, do you have, have any books I recommend? No, the, there is a couple of books. Let me just find them while I'm talking to you. Um, there are a couple of really cool books. Here it is. Yeah. All right. There's a guy. He's, a, you know, artist. I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm a landscape photographer. I consider myself an artist because if I put myself in the photographer category, then the photographers seem to have these sets of rules that we must use as photographers. Now I'm an artist and I sell my work as an artist. Okay. My art is landscape photography, but I'm an artist. Okay. So there's a guy. He's an artist. He's a, um, He's an American guy, I believe. He's got two books. Actually, he's just released the third one. I can see there's a third one there. I'm going to have to get the third one. So his name is Austin Cleon, Cleon, A-U-S-T-I-N-K-L-E-O-N. Okay, and he's got two books. Well, they had two books until recently, Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work. They're two great books for, for helping you with that mentality thing. And he's just, I can see there's a new one. I don't know how old the new one is. because I've never seen it before called Keep Going, but Austin Cleon, K-L-E-O-N. I will share, um, I'm going to share one page from Amazon for you guys. Um, let me just get the American Amazon rather than the Australian Amazon. Um, here we go. So, yeah, um, Austin's got a really good mentality as an artist, okay? And, you know, the reality is, that there's so many things that we could be doing. And I think one of the challenges we have is that we're trying to do too much, right? When I work with my clients, I tell them that they have to do two things, right? And then everything else is optional, right? Because there are so many things we could be doing in marketing and we don't need to be spending our entire week, our entire month doing marketing. I believe and I do myself market in two to three hours a week. Okay, two to three hours a week is all of the marketing tasks. Task. I run two art businesses online, my own landscape photography business and my friend Natalie's work. And you can't see Natalie's work because I haven't got one on this wall. But Natalie, like this one, she paints Australian wildlife art. Um, I run Natalie's business. That's a six-figure online art business, just selling prints, just selling calendars and cards, right? Not originals, six figures, okay? Two to three hours per week of marketing. Two things you must do. Number one, do a post on Facebook every single day. Now, I don't care if you want to do Instagram and all of the other platforms. That's cool. But you do Facebook first. And why do you use Facebook? One, there are more buyers on Facebook, right? Again, I don't care about likes. I don't care about engagement. What I care about is getting people who are going to buy stuff, okay? And in my experience, and I've worked with hundreds of artists around the world, 99.9% .9 of artists will find their audience of buyers on Facebook. So that's number one. The other reason to post on Facebook is 
On Facebook, we don't use hashtags. We can use has hashtags, but they're not essential like they are or they used to be on Instagram. Instead, we can share a link, not just to our website, but to that specific product in our store, right? So if someone says, hey, I want to buy this picture, right? The link is in the description. So they want to buy the picture, they can just click on it and they can buy it right now. So that's why Facebook is powerful. Now, the other, other thing you need to do every single week is email your email list every single week. Right. And I'm not selling, I'm not saying send them a um, marketing email saying buy my stuff now. Right. 90%, 95% of the emails that I send are this is what's been worked on. This is the story behind the work. Thought I would share it with you. Right. 90 to 95% of the emails I send. Do not, do not ask people to buy stuff. I get sales from every single email that I send, but 90 to 95% of the emails I send do not ask people to buy stuff. They include links, right? And they talk about the products and they send people through to galleries and all sorts of other things, but I'm not telling people to buy stuff. I'm telling them a story. And then I include links. Now, Samantha's asked a really, really important question. Okay. Now, this question blows my mind every time. And it's something we get conditioned to believe stuff. Right. So Samantha's question is, do you find putting a link in your post is hurting your views? And the answer to that question is yes. But the bigger answer to that question is, A, I don't care how many people see my post. I care how many people click on my post, how many people visit my website. My goal isn't to have a 1,000 people like my post on Facebook or Instagram. My goal is to get people from Facebook or Instagram to my website, right? My website, I own. My email list. I own. I own that traffic. I can engage with those people however I choose to. When I'm on social media, it doesn't matter which platform I am on social media. Think about it like this. You're renting the space. You do not own it, no, regardless of how much money you spend on ads, growing your email, uh, growing your likes, growing your, growing your engagement. You do not own that space. You're renting the space. And your landlord is a slumlord. You have absolutely no rights. You can be kicked out at any stage for any reason at all. And usually it's not even a real reason, right? So don't invest time growing your audience. Invest time growing your email list and growing your engagement with your people, right? In the place that you own, your email list you own, your website you own. Even if you're using another platform like MailChimp or if you're on art storefronts, whatever it is, right, you still own that. If you decide tomorrow you want to leave your website provider, you want to leave MailChimp and go to another provider, you download the, your list, you take it to your new provider. If you get kicked off a social media platform today, and I see it happening to artists all the time, there is absolutely no comeback. There's not even a person to talk to to have a conversation about. It's just Bad luck. It doesn't matter whether you've got a thousand followers or a million followers. If they kick you off, it's just bad luck. All right. So focus on the things that you control. You can control your website. You can control your email list. All right. So the answer to the question is, do I get less um, engagement on a post that's got links in it? Yes. But I don't care about that because what I'm trying to do is drive traffic to my website. Facebook is a means for me to communicate with my audience. Instagram is a means for me to communicate with my audience. What is the goal to do that? It's to drive them from Facebook, from Instagram to my website. End of story. Okay. Yes, Christian, absolutely. Every day on other platforms, but Facebook is the essential. The others are a, a question of time. 
Now, the other thing that I will say, because I'm going to come up to, um, we're going to run out of time very soon. So if there are any questions, hit me up with the questions. Don't share an Instagram post because it's really easy to do in the Instagram app. Do not share an Instagram post to Facebook. Right? Don't do it. Two reasons. One, Facebook is more biased. So you want the Facebook people to see something that looks like it's been written for Facebook. If it's got 30 hashtags in the um, in the comment, in the caption, it doesn't look like it's been written for Facebook. It looks like it's been written for Instagram, right? Two, Instagram, you can't drive traffic directly to your website from a post. They have to click on your bio, click on your bio link and get through. It's three to four clicks, right? Whereas on Facebook, it's a single click from within the post, a link directly to that product in the store so that they can buy it. The only time I ever share the generic link to my website, so my store homepage, the only time I do that is when I've got a sale on and I say, hey, guys, I've got a sale on right now, 25% off everything. Here is the link to my store. End of story. No, Facebook doesn't like... Facebook does not like you linking to external websites, right? Christian, absolutely they don't. But that's not your problem. They don't want you to link to an external website because they want to keep the traffic on Facebook for as long as possible so they can serve more ads to the people, right? That's okay. That's Their only goal is to generate as much income as possible from the traffic you bring to the website, to, the, to Facebook, right? Your only goal is to communicate with your audience and drive as much traffic as you possibly can to your website, right? So use it as a tool. Accept that you're going to get less engagement, but that's fine because the engagement's not the goal. The goal is website traffic and sales, leads and sales. You want to drive people to your website so you can sell more stuff. That's your goal for social media. Your goal for social media is not likes. It is not followers. It is purely to get people to you on your website and so that people can firstly engage with you on your website, sign up for your email list, and then buy stuff from you. The problem we have is the time, right? People think they're going to get a website today. They're going to share it tomorrow. And next week, people are just going to start buying stuff. The reality is that the time frame is usually at least a year, right? So you do all of these things that I've been talking about. You do this every single day for a year, then you will start to get some traction. But it may take two years. For me personally, it took three or four years of working all this stuff out before I started making money, okay? But you can do it. Now, um, do you use, Samantha's asked one last question, and I've got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to finish with that, right? Do I use Facebook ads for email subscription signups or, or also to promote your work? So the answer to that is yes, but. Samantha, I never advise any artist to do ads on their own, right? Facebook ads is a bottomless black hole. Same with Google ads. If you're going to do it, work with someone who knows what they're doing, right? Now, one of the things that I do, I run three businesses. So I run two art businesses, so my own and Natalie's work, and I run a consultancy helping fellow artists with growing their email list. And we use a tried and true method that we've been using for years now to use Facebook ads to leverage them to grow your email list. So that's what we help people do. I would never recommend anybody do it on their own because what you're going to do is make more mistakes than, than have successes. If you're going to do it, whether you use us or use someone else, get someone who is an expert in Facebook ads to help you if you're going to use that. And never use Facebook ads for engagement. So don't use ads to grow um, your likes. Don't in, in get, use um, boosts or anything like that. We use ads only, well, for 99% of our clients, there are a few that we don't. We do something differently, but we use ads primarily to grow the email list. 
Because once we've got the email on the email list, then we own the list. We can communicate with the email list how we choose. Right? We're not reliant on algorithms to do that. If you think about this another way, if you have a great post on Facebook or Instagram, everywhere else, let's say you have a thousand people who like your page. If you have a really, really good post, somewhere between 50 and 100 people are going to see that post. So five to 10%. That's a really good post. An average post may be 2 to 3%, so 20 or 30 people. If we have an email list with a 1,000 people on it and we have an okay email list, we're still getting 150 people opening that email, right, 15%. But the average list, you're talking 20 to 30% of people opening the email list. You're getting significantly more engagement people opening the emails and you can control the frequency. You don't rely on the algorithms. It makes a huge difference. Right? So this was a 30, 30 minute webinar. We run services helping fellow artists grow their art business. If you want to know more, then please get in touch. Um, drop me a DM, send me an email. I will do, send a follow up email with a replay for those who missed the whole thing. If you want to watch a replay, it will be available in the Facebook group. Um, let me just share quickly the Facebook group so everybody, if they're not already in, you can join. Okay, just request to join the Facebook group here and um, you will be able to see the replay, um, but I will share that link in replay um, in an email later today. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Some great questions today, some really good engagement. I really appreciate that. You have a lovely evening and I will talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.